Hello, hello. Yes, um, yes. Well, that little is uh, might be given away by the title of this video: "Live Taste Testing Some New Flavored Alcohols I've Made." Um, this one uh, is a bourbon that uh, has been infused with. Uh, they're all rock candy infusions. This was a, a, a bacon maple flavored rock candy, which tasted freakishly like bacon, the candy, that is. Um, it's come from a, a place on Chapel Street called the Bread Balloon. They make all these really boutique um, rock candies and jellies and whatnot, and they've just had some new experimental flavors. And I went in there today and I was like, ooh, I was like a kid in a candy store, um, because there was a few different flavors to taste. And they had a deal, you know, three for, and um, so I picked three flavors and um, I got the bacon maple flavored candy. Um, and this one, which is a, a vodka, uh, it's like, they, I think they called it lime fizz. This is really nice, I've already tried this. It's a great color too, isn't it? Um, I hope the color shows up properly. Um, and they had a couple of hot candies, spicy ones, chili ones. Uh, there's one, there's a cinnamon, hot cinnamon, super mega cinnamon. And there's another one they called fire and ice because it was chili and menthol flavors. And that's the one I've got. So it's this sort of purple uh, color. Um, that's tequila with um, menthol chili candy dissolved in it. All right, I'm getting the very bad connection thing, which I hope goes away and I hope we'll all be fine. Although admittedly my uh, internet, my Wi-Fi has been kind of shit for a couple of days, so I'm not altogether sure. But we'll see. What I'm drinking here is the uh, bacon bourbon. And um, it's pretty funny. Hi, Ruku-san, Celtic King philosopher. Oh, we'll just see how, how drunk I can get while I'm doing this. Cause it's Saturday night. And see, I'm not drinking alone. That would be a sign of alcohol. I'm drinking with you. So I'm not drinking alone. A, a bacon flavored drink is very strange. G'day Stephen, how's it going? But, um, you know, it's not that uncommon. Like when I was looking at the different um, rock candies and deciding which one to get, I thought I'm gonna get this bacon one. The girl in the shop actually said, ooh, that, that, that'd go with bourbon. And bacon flavored bourbon is, um, relatively common, it's the thing people do. So um, that's what I've done. It's, it's just here, it's uh, um, It's a sort of pinky color, which I guess is a just sort of traditional bacony color anyway. So it's got a kind of pinky color, um, flesh tone almost in that. That big decanter, by the way, I just got that today. That's now my biggest skull decanter. Um, they came from uh, in there, decorations, uh, the shop where I got the candy, they have some of the skull decanters um, that I often have my drinks in, uh, just with colored liquid in, because they make some skull lollipops and whatnot. And yeah, they just had, they have various colored liquids in things. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I just think, Philosopher likes my kitchen more than my green screen. You didn't like my green screen. I just haven't got around to setting up a green screen in my new house. What didn't you like? You don't like green screen at all? Or you didn't like that I had animations on it? Oh, just for the drinks. It's a good, it's a good decor, really. Oh, I see what you mean for the drinks. When I was making drinks before, I did it with a, a green screen and I'd have a picture of a bar and then really often the drinks would get chroma keyed out and it would look very weird. But um, yeah, so well, now we're just sitting down having a drink. Well, uh, um, bacon one is really interesting because as bacon tends to, it's like the aftertaste, the lingering taste is this bacony taste. <laughs> so you have to like bacon. If it's probably no actual bacon in it. Um, I looked at the ingredients and it just referred to flavors. So I don't think they actually soaked bacon in uh, the you know liquid sugar they make the rock candy out of. Whereas the chili ones, they do use actual chili and um, there's one I almost got. They had a few good ones and 
One I almost got, I called uh, Lemon Verbena with uh, basil pieces in it. And so it was like this little like yellowy rock candy with little flakes of herb in it. And it was nice, but I thought that just kind of tasted like, um, like lemon lollies basically. And well, I thought I'm just gonna go for a straight up sweet one. Uh, the lime fizz one was more interesting. And as I said, I've had the lime fizz. I've tasted it tonight and it's really yummy. Do I drink beer? No, I do not drink beer. Um, I drink cider sometimes, but um, previous, this is just the um, bourbon, bacon bourbon with uh, some lemonade. I made a little cocktail before I looked up some uh, bacon bourbon cocktail recipes online and just to sort of reaffirm to myself, this is a thing that people drink. And um, there was a, an actual, you know, thing you buy off the shelf that's a bacon infused bourbon and it was their website where they were having all these cocktails. And so I made a version of what they called a bacon bourbon sour, which was my bacon bourbon, uh, some lemon juice. Uh, I had a little bit of still apple cider in it as opposed to bubbly apple cider. And um, some Saint Germain elderflower liqueur. Got the old cocktail shaker out, shook that up, and um, yeah. What do I like to drink? All the things. I, that's why I like. I like flavoring my drinks. I do it. Um, <coughs> um, there's going to be a lot of that tonight because I'm just going to get more drunk and care less. Um, and I had pizza earlier, so I'm kind of full. Like cider has a tendency to give me heartburn. Usually drink beer. Well, philosopher, there are of course lots of different sorts of ciders. And um, in case in pick, I actually mentioned I was drinking a still cider. Most cider, almost all cider, is like bubbly, carbonated. Um, I got the, the bottles just here. Just a sec. It's like, ah. This I found at a, at a cider festival. Um, this is made in a town called Orange, that's west of Sydney, across the mountains. Um, which was an apple growing area for ages, so it's not, and they had wineries there, so it's not at all surprising when cider became trendy, they started making cider there because they already had the apple things. Um, uh, but this, uh, they, they're called Small Lakers, and they, yeah, that's not coming up at all. Arr, cider. They spell the cider with a Y. Um, and it's non carbon, oh, they make a carbonated one as well but their non-carbonated one is really yummy. Um, what do I like on pizza? Cheese. Ah, see, I am a lumberjack experiencing an existential crisis. Hey there, Zendai. I think I got, that wait, like I have to look in Tendai. Why do I say Zendai? That's a the Star Trek alien, I think. Um, it's winter here, it's cold. I have lots of flannel shirts, which I wear unironically um, because they're so nice and warm. It's like get, you're getting a hug from your shirt. I have flannelette sheets on my bed too, although it's not lumberjack pattern on my bed. Um, I'm a big fan of flannelette, basically, in cold weather because it feels warm and I like that. Um, so yeah, there's a question, what do I like on pizza? Cheese, mostly. In fact, my favorite pizza uh, here in Melbourne is in the Italian district on Ligon Street. Five different cheeses on the pizza. It's yummy. The one I made tonight was just like homemade. Like I bought a, I, I, did, I didn't make the base. I bought the base from the supermarket and then, you know, uh, tomato paste and herbs and, and mixed cheeses. Again, just from the supermarket, nothing exotic. So technically, I guess I made a one, two, three, four, five, six cheese pizza tonight, I think it is, because I use different cheeses from the supermarket. Um, and bacon, that was all that's on it, cheese and bacon. So I'm having a bit of a bacon night. Jalapenos, oh see, I'm not, I'm not a real serious spicy, although this is the test later. I haven't re I really made a drink with this. The um, candy this came from, uh, menthol and chili, is fucking hardcore. Um, and I've melted it into some uh, tequila. And uh, that will be my next drink. You'll get to see me taste it because I haven't really tasted this one yet. So um, 
Yes. So I don't really go for chilies, but that, I, I like these chili candies in tequila. I think that goes really well. So I'll be trying that in a little bit. I'm not going to rush too much. Work. Ah, so do I smoke? No, I do not smoke. Philosopher, I agree. Cheese is addictive. I got, um, uh, oh, the one cheese I didn't put on my pizza, my favorite cheddar I've ever had is one from England from a place called Wookie Hole. And when I was last in England, just for a laugh, I went, oh look, there's actually a tourist thing at the Wookie Hole cheese making place where you go to the caves, they store the cheese in caves when they do it. Um, I just found it literally, it was in um, uh, Costco here. They had this Wookie Hole cheese. And prior to ever having the cheese, I do remember, in a previous trip to England, having seen a tourist brochure for a place called Wookie Hole, and um, I just thought it was funny because I'm childish. Wookie Hole sounds like you're going to visit Chewbacca's butthole or something. Um, and then when I saw there was, oh, look, here's the actual Wookie Hole cheese. And it is the best fucking cheddar I've ever had. It is so nice. Oh, it's a really good cheese. Um, look at, hello. My, name, my name's Angry Aussie, and I'm a cheese nerd. Wookie Hole's full of Cybermen. That's, see, now we're crossing genres. Um, I'm not sure I'm okay with that, but. I actually went to the Wookie Hole tourist thing last time I was in England, and it's shit. It's, I was gonna, I was gonna, say something vaguely nice about it, but I can't be bothered. The Wookie Hole tourist attraction is shit. Um, uh, their cheese is really good. Like it definitely my favorite cheddar. It's really good. Ah, uh, yes. Doctor Who films all those sorts of places. As a, like, cause I'm, uh, you know, grew up watching old school Doctor Who. And it was like a running joke, like they were always filming in quarries. They always film in quarries in like 70s Doctor Who, because that looks like some desolate alien planet. So they're just finding quarries all over the UK that they could shoot in. Revenge of the Cybermen, 74. I was tempted today, um, the JB Hi-Fi have a special on the old Doctor Who discs you know buy one get one free and they've got that um recreated one that just came out like it's animated because they there's no so it's a patrick troughton one and there's no surviving video of it but uh the audio uh survived and so they did an animation of power of the daleks and um I was tempted to get that and I was looking at, you know, cause they had old school ones of all, the, every doctor they had, William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, John Pertwee, Tom Baker, and the ones who come after that who are far less interesting. Um, I really tempted and I might still do it. I've got a new video. Um, Kelsey King asking about AZ. I've got a new AZ video. I'll probably put up tomorrow. I edited it earlier tonight where he talks in, in a bit of graphic detail about how fucking awful the procedure of getting all these teeth taken out was because um, it was not good. It was in a chair under local anaesthetic and it involved um, buried uh, wisdom to, oh no, it, it just sounded fucking awful. Um, but I'll probably put that up tomorrow. And hopefully we will see the man himself sometime soon. I am staying in touch with him and I am talking to him. And we've got a new AZ video to look forward to. Um, I almost put it up today, but I was just thinking, so having a few drinks today, I wanted to do a live stream and talk about things. I mean, question, how long will it take for Video Dude to show up? How long will it take to sanction? Oh no, I blocking is permanent. I blocked Video Dude last time just for being boring. Um, that's the usual reason I block people. It's just like, oh, fuck you, you useless waste of space. As if I'm gonna waste any time on you. It's just like, yeah, nah, not gonna happen, buddy. Um, so, yeah, that's, to me, that's, that's the big sin. Being boring is the big sin. 
I uh, have more tolerance for people I don't like, people who espouse views I don't like, if they're not boring. But when people are stupid and obnoxious and boring, they don't last very long at all. Uh, I, I don't have any patience for pathetic shit like that. Huh. No, Rukutan, you're not boring. I think I was, some of my dinner stuck between my teeth just came out. So you're just getting all the grossness because I've had enough drinks to not care. I'm not like legless leg. Give me a couple more and I will be all hey. This, um, yeah. Saturday night on the internet getting drunk. I tell you what though, as per usual when I'm doing this, there's Star Trek going on in there. And uh, Mrs. Angry and her son have been messing with my head because normally they regular as clockwork on their Star Trek nights. They will start watching at 8 p.m. and they'll watch two episodes. And that's when I'll do a live stream. Let them watch Star Trek and I'll come out here. And, um, but they were like just binging it today. Uh, what? Luke? Who's drunk? Your dad? You've walked in on your dad and he's drunk? Don't, don't put up with that. He should be a role model. Drinking's not big or clever, kids. The downfall of the society it is. But no, no, they've been binging on Star Trek all day. And so it's thrown my sense of what's what out. Like earlier tonight, after watching like five episodes, it's like, let's have dinner. What, dinner? You can't have dinner? It must be midnight by now. No, it's 6 p.m. Okay. All right, you've, you've thrown my sense of what's what completely out the window um, with no concern for my emotional or mental well-being. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. So, poor connection. That's the first time I've seen that. I, um, the, the internet connection when I'm doing this on the phone is either fine or it goes very poor connection and a little red band goes up the top and warns me. But just then it was doing a sort of an intermediate one that just said poor connection and didn't have any red band. And um, it just made me feel sorry for the connection. Aww, poor connection. What's wrong with it? It's like a, another awful dad joke from the goodies. Something I saw uh, a million times repeated when I was a kid. Like when I only had uh, two channels to watch, the ABC and one commercial channel. Um, and the goodies were repeated a million times on the ABC. And there was one where one of them's being taught how to drive. Mr. Puggy, you don't mean that. You want me to drink a lot and cause a scene. I know, that was reverse psychology just then. But yeah, one of the goodies being taught how to drive. Graham's teaching Tim how to drive. And he said, okay, first, the clutch is depressed. And Tim goes, oh, cheer up, little clutch. And he goes, the gears are engaged. And he goes, oh, congratulations, gears. Now hold out your hand. You're being very silly. Um, but yes, dad jokes and puns. That's what makes the world go around. Ah, that is actually quite refreshing. It's a very weird taste. Um, the candy... The sweetness of the candy um, has really taken the edge off the bourbon. I mean, I suppose I could take a shot of it and see if I still feel that because I've diluted it. But as part of Newcastle, one in NBN. Oh, no, NBN. Okay, I don't need or want NBN because I have Foxtel. I have cable. I have fiber optic cable to my house. And I've been getting the internet through that for years. Now, apparently... <coughs> Did I warn you there was going to be lots of that tonight? Apparently, I'm going to be forced onto NBN sometime in the next year or two. And I even talked to the Telstra person who's telling me I'm going to be on NBN. I was like, this doesn't make any sense because there's all that fuckery with the government not doing fibre to the home, only doing fibre to the node. But I've already got fiber to the home. So that, I'm gonna keep that, aren't I? You, are, are you saying you're going to force me onto something that has less performance than what I'm on? Because I'm not gonna put up with that. I'm not going to put up with being 
forcibly downgraded. Can you guarantee me I'm not going to be forcibly downgraded? And they were like, no, I'm not going to guarantee you that. I'm like, well, you know, fuck the lot of you then. Yeah, well, okay. Yes, computer was forced to Windows 10. I had that as well. And it really fucked my computer for ages. It took about six updates until the really bad things stopped happening with my computer. Yes, the NBN Civil War. Ah, uh, see, I will fucking lead that shit. If they fuck with my internet and downgrade it, I will be very fucking upset. Um... I, I don't, I've, God, I've just spent a week being fucked with by Telstra and I don't want it anymore. Like I said, after finally getting a resolution with Telstra, after a week of fucking incompetence, I even said, because I try to be nice on uh, social media. Like, I don't... Uh, I tend to not abuse brands on Twitter, say, particularly not with the at, um, because I know it's someone's job. Someone's job is to monitor that social media and they don't need someone going, fuck you, you fucking cunt, popping up on the thing. So I tend to not do that. Um, and so when I was angry at Telstra about my phone not working, I made sure it popped up in their social media, but I didn't say anything abusive and they kept saying, oh, oh my God, there's an outage. And it turned out after a week that wasn't a problem and they never told me the right thing and they're fucking idiots. So when I finally worked what was wrong, I was so fucking angry and I did get it resolved, but then I just went on Twitter, okay, to the poor cunts who manage Telstra's social media. I am known for making my living, for making videos, getting very angry and swearing when something fucks me about and pisses me off. So brace yourself, motherfuckers, because I'm coming. Oh, right. Yes, Microsoft with the forcing features on us. Yes, this thing. The <laughs> The only internet I had problem with was my phone. And it turned out because of an overdue bill, which they didn't tell me about. And I kept, I contact them every day and they're going, oh no, there's an outage. And nobody ever said, well, it's actually about the bill. But fuck. It's just like, you know, you know, I can pay you the bill. I moved house and my address didn't get updated. So I didn't get the bill, but I can pay the bill. But you didn't say it was the bill. You said it was an outage, you fucking stupid fucks my drinks out okay now we're, now 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 we're gonna be a bit daring this is the chili drink chili and menthol fire and ice fire and ice tequila coming up um trying to decide what i should have it with I should have it with something that's lime or just lemonade i think tequila tequila and lime tequila and lime that sounds right doesn't it that sounds fitting that sounds appropriate no, I've, I, I tried it early. Man, I swear to God, the rock candy that was made of, the fire and ice rock candy, was fucking hardcore. We could kill Aidsy with it because he's allergic to chili and it has actual chili. <coughs> um, but we don't want to kill him, you know, just sort of mess with him a bit. Lime, lime. Okay, I think I need a little bit more ice. <sighs> yes. <laughs> That is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw a pantomime. Just get a little bit more ice. This will be an interesting colour, the or a gross colour, this drink. Um, put a little bit of the lime. Mm, that smells nice, actually. The lime soda. Okay, here we go. My soda stream working at home so I can... Just mix up mixes to go with my beverages. Double? Double? We want a double, don't we? We want a double. Is there something that doesn't want to kill AIDSy? No, Celtic King. Everything wants to. Um, and it's all very frustrated that it doesn't succeed, quite honestly. I'm going to go double. Double the tequila. A little bit left in the shot glass. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Okay. How do you do? I like how pieces agree. Yeah. Tasty sweet. Oh. 
Okay. That, that was like um, just a few drops of it that was left in the thing. Um, whoa. Okay. Hey, who dares me to do a shot of it? Um, <laughs> I'm using you guys as my excuse for being led astray. Uh, um, Aisy should have slate line, you're absolutely right. Philosopher, ginger and pepper and alcohol. Oh look, I, I do various things. Okay, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, t I'm not gonna do a whole shot of this. Um, but a little bit of this because it seems pretty hardcore. And um, I can do a little bit in here. Oh, well, the KFC, that's nice. Well, that's, this is straight. This is straight. It's not a whole shot. Um, it's probably half a shot. How about you go? Oh. oh, that's pretty good, actually. Oh, man, that's got a serious chili burn. And the menthol thing in there. So it tastes a bit like cough medicine in a good way. Mix that, put that in there. Man, that's gonna clear your sinuses out right there. Never do that on a live stream, get in trouble every time. That just looks like dirty water, doesn't it? Maybe that's what I should call it. The, <laughs> the dirty drink. I now diluted, it's really nice because all those flavors are in there. The menthol's there, the chili's there, and um, the lime is in there. What do we call it? Ditch water? Oh, I uh, see. You are awful calling it Trump juice. That is just awful. Okay, philosopher, why didn't I just use the other side of the shot thing that's smaller? You're not my real dad, okay? Because there was some liquid in it. If I turned it upside down, it would have all tipped out on the floor. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to come up with a reason why your sensible suggestion wasn't sensible. <laughs> that was a sensible suggestion, which I did not follow. Oh no, that's a winner. I really like, I really like having the chili flavors in tequila. I think it works really well. Oh. Okay, that's good. So who's been paying attention to the G20 thing that's going on and what a fuck up Trump is? Um, because it's just like America's reputation in the world just being complete, completely fucking trashed by this bumbling goon. Did I tell you the one-eyed hooker story? I, that does not sound familiar. I'm prepared to let you go ahead with that story. Someone you follow on Twitter did a great analysis of the body language, okay. Hopefully I'm back. Did some emergency surgery. Did some emergency surgery thing. It's probably a, a minute or so lag for everyone to get back online. Um, I hope, I hope everyone gets back. We'll see what happens. Um, and I won't do that again. I, that was just a one-off trying to make it work again for watching. Yeah, oh, very bad connection. Jesus, it's just fucking with me tonight. Hmm. You might have lost the people in that few buffering, but I'll hang, I'll hang on. We'll see how this goes. Um, I'll soldier on through this very bad connection and see what happens in here. Oh no, more buffering. Ugh. Ugh, hope it doesn't keep doing this. This would be very annoying if it did. Don't want it to keep doing this. Don't want it to be difficult. Um, but my internet has been a bit shitty for a couple of days. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. I'm not gonna give up straight away. I will give it a couple minutes. Ugh. 
and just drinking my um, ditch water. Swamp water? I don't know, I think it just does look like um, dirty water. Yeah, Tendai technology is great when it's works. It's not really working for me at the moment. So, yeah. so it's basically one of the elements of this is purple colored and one is sort of light green. And so it's just come up with this dirty color. Tastes pretty good though. Looking at, oh, just while um, I'm waiting for this to go, I'm gonna read a magazine. This is a quite cool magazine called um, uh, Cosmos. The science of everything. It's got such great uh, articles listed on the cover. Time to pop an anti-aging pill. Hey, hey, Aussie brick chick. How big is space? That's good. That's what we want to know, isn't it? That's the one we want to know. How big is space? I always liked um, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to uh, the Galaxy. One of the bits was like, how big is space? Really, really big. And um, like, think of the biggest thing you can think of, and it's bigger than that. You might think that the park down the road is big, but that's nothing compared to space. Oh my God, what's this? Chemist Irene Joliot Curie, 1897 to 1956, pictured in a lab in 1938. I say this because how fucking bored does she look? She just looks bored as hell. Like, why are you taking my picture? That's so boring. Didn't take my picture. Yes, Aussie Brick Chick, my net is apparently jumpy. Uh, Superbugs. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find how big is space? I am. Apparently, deep space would smell bad if spare. Okay. So, Mr. Puggy wins a guy, decides to hire a sex worker. Okay. Flora's Hobbit mystery, distance. Sorry, Flor Flora's Hobbit mystery deepens. That's an interesting one. Asked for a sex worker that could whistle while she gave him a blowjob. That is an interesting request. Okay. Someone's saying space is infinite, right? Well, apparently not. They're going to tell us how big space is. So I'm just looking for that article because I'm kind of keen. So I am, I'm not getting the bad signal message anymore. Outsmarting superbugs. Smarter weapons, the phage. Okay. The uh, Roth loader says we have no women in this department that's capable of that. But he shows $500. The owner of the brothel says, uh, it didn't budge. Okay. What killed the giant wombats? That's, that's an interesting question. Guy says, for $1,000, can you get me a sex worker who can whistle while doing a blow job? Okay. Any trial. Soup bugs, all these. Okay. Oh, here we go. How big is space? There's no bigger empirical question in Afrophysics than how big space is. Cathal O'Donnell provides a brief history of ideas about the size and shape of the universe. Okay, so we've got $1,000 offered. Uh, and finally gives in and said, all right, here's one. After an amazing blowjob, the guy says he was blown away by her performance. Good. We're getting there. Is, uh, I'm looking for the too long didn't read version of how big is space because it's like four push okay I love remember how when I talked about how big space was I invoked the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy the last paragraph of this story on how big is space actually says which brings us back to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy if there's any real truth it's that the entire multi-dimensional infinity of the universe is almost certainly being run by maniacs. And Hitchhiker's Guide also, also has it. Okay, so where we've got with the whistling blowjob story is a guy wants a, a sex worker who can whistle while giving a blowjob 
and say it's not possible and he ends up paying a thousand dollars and so the manager of brothel says okay this does and gets a really good blowjob apparently including whistling and he says um I'm, I'm impressed and the sex worker says you don't want to know how i did it he goes oh yes i do it can't be that bad i really want to know so now we're waiting for the payoff on that while i'm while i'm trying to find out how big space is see this is the sort of quality you get on my live streams at the same time we're talking about a blowjob with a sex worker who can whistle while doing it and we're talking about how big space is okay so we've got the stage with sex workers given in and put down a glass eye okay was that the punchline or is there more to come you need to type faster so Ooh, this is an interesting because when I said how big is space someone brought up infinity is it space infinity big well here's the thing the great British physicist Paul Dirac said it's the most important challenge in physics is getting rid of infinity no infinity has ever been observed in nature notes Columbia University astrophysicist Jeanne Levin in her 2001 memoir how the universe got its spots nor is infinity tolerated in a scientific theory. So, oh, well, I'll agree. I also thought, isn't the universe infinite? Apparently, the people who know says infinity's bullshit. <coughs> so how come physicists keep allowing that the universe may be infinite? The idea goes back to f people like Newton must be infinite based on laws of gravitation. Huh. So Einstein also talked about an infinite universe. Argentinian writer Georges Louis Borges imagines, imagines an infinite library. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right, because the, the there's a dominant theory of the universe being torus shaped, which is a donor shape. So I'm still trying to find out how big is the unit. I'm just trying to help you out here. Oh, Citizen Kane, Jacques May, just watched Citizen Kane. I've got that on disc. Citizen Kane is a pretty good movie. Um, Attempts to directly prove or disprove the infinity of the universe seem to lead us to a dead end, at least with current technology, but we might do it by inference, Cornish observes. Mm, okay, so there's a lot of discussion still about this. Uh, there's multiverse theory being discussed here. Okay, we're getting down to the conclusion is to settle the issue, we need to know more about what went down in the first split second of the universe. Perhaps gravitational waves will be the answer, the way to hear the vibrations of the Big Bang. Whether infinite or finite, standalone or one of an endless multitude, the universe is surely a mind-bending place. Well, that's a cop-out. That's a cop-out, quite honestly. Toby McCall, uh, this is a magazine called Cosmos. The summary of that article seemed to be, well, we don't know. Who's that there? That's Curry Hunt 92. Okay. So I'm slightly disappointed. Slightly disappointed that the article doesn't answer it and actually resolves with, gosh, it's complicated, isn't it? I knew it was complicated. Life is complicated. The universe is complicated. Right. Puggy wins. The, the theory about the universe being donut shaped, a, a torus, and it feeds in on itself. That's why time isn't linear as such. Time is cyclical. And it collapses back in on itself and starts again. The donut collapses and then forms again and time and everything is cyclical um what the people at that end of science is saying is like well, man shit's fucked up yo um 
I think that should be inscribed on a plaque of, um, oh, that's, that's, that's a good tip. Jatma says, if you have any stuttering or the latency, uh, reduce the resolution to like 144. Um, uh, because, you know, we're just chatting, so the visual's not that important. But um, yeah, that, that, that's a good tip. Thank you, Jatma. Origins of Entanglement. Wow, this seems like a pretty good read, this magazine, actually. This is a San oh, here we go. This is always in movies, the San Andreas countdown. Blind faults, missing links, ever building stress. What's keeping seismologists at California up at night? I think what's probably keeping seismologists up at night is the fear that the rock won't rescue them. Because that's the only thing that could make you feel safe about a big earthquake, that um, the rock would rescue you. Dwayne the Rock Johnson, of course, will rescue you from the rocks. Well, here's an interesting one. Memory traces in our brains, engrams are correct. Oh, this appears, this article called Lighting Up Memory Lane seems to actually be saying uh, uh, memories of physical thing. That's an interesting idea, Puggy Wins. Getting a Discord server so people can voice chat with me. Hmm. Okay. Trying to actually define what a memory is. Because this also comes down to what's consciousness. Um, because that's not actually settled. What is consciousness? Like people who are into ideas like the singularity, the rapture of the nerds and computers becoming as smart and then smarter than humans. That's hard to predict when we actually can't adequately define what consciousness is. Processing of information is not the same as consciousness. So, there's one school of thought that says it will never matter how fast computer processing gets and um, how much memory they have and all those things. So, uh, because consciousness is not just the processing of information. What computers are doing is processing information faster and faster and in greater and greater volumes, uh, but that's not consciousness. Um, Curie Hunt is asking what's going on. I don't know. I really don't know. And there also are very pretty pictures. And look, okay, I'm gonna share with you pretty pictures. What is this article? Pandora's box. Global temperatures, permafrost. We're okay, we're all gonna die. What are these pictures? Oh, this is anthrax. Okay, here you go. That's anthrax. Isn't that pretty? Just throwing it out there. That's anthrax. This, what's this? This is smallpox. Aren't diseases pretty? That's smallpox. Diseases are pretty. Diseases get a bad rap, but they're pretty. This one, wow! This, okay, you've got to guess. Which one's this? Which one's this? This is a pretty serious disease. I want to see some guesses. I want to see some guesses. Which disease is this? It does look like watermelon seeds, but, and beans are not diseases. It's not Ebola. No, there you go. A couple guesses for Ebola. It's not Ebola. It is not Ebola. A couple of people have guessed Ebola. Uh, it is historically more significant than Ebola. Malaria. Type. Okay, you're making good guess. That's actually the bubonic plague. That is the bubonic plague. This one, okay, this is also pretty. This one's pretty. That's tetanus. That's tetanus, that one. Celtic King, do I like science? Hell yes, I like science. Oh, that's all the disease pictures. Now I'm depressed, I thought there might have been more disease pictures. They were all pretty. Did dinosaurs fall foul of dark matter? That's an interesting question. Making alien worlds on Earth? Is Cephas smallpox? 
Uh, beauties of a natural world? And look at this. I think we've passed all the interesting articles now. Science Club, how to make it snow. That sounds pretty good. Wow. How good does that sound? Look at that one. Where the Bible meets the Twilight Zone, the Planet Jesus Trilogy. That sounds like a great read, doesn't it? My God, what's that about? And different cloud types. Fluoride in the water. Evolution of humans. This is a pretty damn good magazine, actually. Planet Jesus seems like an unusual thing to be in a science magazine. But it's there. Who wants sperm lookalike swimming around in your brain? Not sure I want anything. So look, it's talking about diseases. Look, there's a phage on there. I think it's trippy as hell how some diseases look under electron microscopes. They look super science fiction-y. And you think, that's not real. They don't really look like that. But they do. They look like weird science fiction things. Well, look, this is an interesting one, another pretty picture. What we've got going on there, that's a bacteria but it's being fed on by bacteriophages. Okay, Mr. Puggy wins is gonna set up a Discord server. I don't even know what that is. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, so yeah, this thing is a phage, a bacteriophage. Eats bacteria. Might supersede um, antibiotics in disease fighting. But that's real. That's not like science fiction. That's not an artist's perception. That's a thing under a micron electroscope. Micron electroscope. Hello, I've been drinking alcohol. What have you been doing? Electron microscope. Oh, uh, you philosopher saying your feet's behind. Possibly. It's the funny thing about doing live streams. Um, what I say seems like it can take up to 30 seconds to reach people. And then when the people type a comment afterwards and I see it, sometimes the comments appear to be about things I said a minute ago, which is really disconcerting from my perspective. So, but I'm a brave soldier and I soldier on. You're going to use my Twitter profile pic as a surf pic. Okay, Pokemons, that's fine. These are the other magazines we get. Gardening magazines, because Mrs. Angry is a keen gardener. Um, the Diggers Club. These are people who um, preserve heritage plants. Like, they're not just your supermarket version of, like, tomatoes and pumpkin and whatnot. Uh, but uh, heritage variations of uh, fruit and veg. Like we've got all these different um, different sorts of apples and pears in here. Did I watch Gardening Australia this evening? No, not this evening, but we usually record it. So I usually end up um, watching Gardening Australia uh, eventually. Why, what did they do? Did they incite the gardeners of Australia to communist revolution? Because that's always an undercurrent on Gardening Australia, I think. I think they're priming people for revolution. I'm just throwing it out there. I think that's what Gardening Australia is all about. I think Gardening Australia is about setting up uh, um, revolution. You're like Costa, the guy who hasn't shaved for 20 years. Okay, I'm gonna throw it out there. Costa bugs the shit out of me. Costa's got this big old beard and it appears to be weighing on his head too heavily. And he tilts his head back like that and he talks like this with his big beard out to about here. Um, so I think there's something wrong with Costa's head, quite honestly. <laughs> I see you're right. Heirloom plants, they're like the old grandparents who do it like, you go, 
Oh, look, I've got a beautiful heirloom tomato. What's that you say, heirloom tomato? The Chinese are ruining the country? You're racist, heirloom tomato. Fun fact, Peter Cumble was a member of the Communist Party. I believe that. People, people who are into gardening are into collectivism. As simply, people are into gardening, they, they're into collective gardens. Oh. They're, they're not capitalists. They're into um, things. Fully automated luxury gay space communism. See, I do. Okay, Shahatna. When we say heritage, what we mean is when you go to the supermarket, you see a couple different sorts of tomatoes. Maybe a couple different sorts of onions, a couple different sorts of pumpkin, a couple different sorts of potatoes. A uh, hundred years ago, there were dozens and dozens of varieties of all these were, were equally common, but it narrowed down into one or two types being the most popular and the most commonly bought. So um, the older breeds of various fruit and veg that aren't as commonly seen in the supermarkets of the world have become known as heritage, heritage tomato, heritage vegetables, heritage fruit. And you get people call themselves seed savers. Well, they do because um, if you preserve them properly, because one fruit or one veg will produce an enormous amount of seed. So the people who like their heritage variations save all the seeds and they, they've got little seed vaults and they swap them with each other and they propagate them. Um, I mean, at one point, Mrs. Angry was growing six different sorts of tomatoes in the garden and ones that you don't normally see in the supermarket. I mean, one of them was basically black and one of them was green. One of them, when it was ripe, was green and had these stripes. It was called a sort of zebra tomato. It was green with stripes. Um, so that's the spectrum of tomatoes. You know, you used to, oh, tomatoes red. Some tomatoes are green when they're ripe, when they're fully ripe, they're green. Some are pretty much black. Um, there is a lot of variation and carrots were traditionally purple. The orange was a different sort that was bred. And this comes back to uh, the Netherlands and the orange being their um, color and the orange carrot being bred to please the king of the Netherlands or something ridiculous like that. But um, yeah, a few people mentioning the idea of fried green tomatoes. You might think that that means unripe tomatoes, and maybe to some people it does, but there are other breeds of tomatoes, other variants of tomatoes that are green when they're ripe. Alcohol is science, Ruki San. This is, the development of alcohol is the sign of an advanced society. Because it's like, you develop, to a, you develop your brain to a certain point and you develop the desire to fuck your brain up. That's what I think it is. Oh my God, the chili in this is um, really noticeable as I drink it. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yes. Do you ever wonder, like you think about everything we take for granted about what we eat and drink. At a certain point, people had to try it for the first time. And I think a, a, a big theory that goes around is a lot of what people saw, they saw their herd animals eating various things and they saw the reaction of the herd animals and they would think, so um, it's like uh, a goat herd saw goats eating um, coffee beans and then pinging all over the place. And they go, well, I wonder what that is. If, 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 if I eat the coffee beans, will I go like, ooh, ooh, yes I do. And then they ended up sort of drying them and grinding them down and turning them into drink, we get coffee. Um, there are still stories you will see in some places of animals eating fermented fruit and getting all fucked up and staggering around and doing stupid shit. I saw a news story only a year or two ago from uh, somewhere very cold, like Greenland or whatever about a drunk moose getting stuck in a tree because uh, it was a fruit tree and the fruit was rotting and fermenting and the moose ate it and got drunk and liked the feeling and climbed up the tree trying to get more of the fruit. 
but then was drunk and got stuck in a tree. And so just the concept of a drunk moose stuck in a tree is one of my favorite things ever. And that's the same as drugs. Like, um, I've mentioned this before in a live stream that um, opium is grown in Tasmania legally. It's like you know, for uh, medicinal hospital drugs. Um, and I thought when I read, okay, uh, opium is grown in Tasmania, must be under lots of security. Do you know what the security is with the opium poppies in Tasmania? A sign. There's a sign on the fence saying, hey, it would be super uncool if you tried to take these opium poppies and it's also illegal. So don't, okay? That's it. That's the fucking security. I mean, I think they have an electric fence, but it's not even a high electric fence. The security is a sign saying, hey, hey, I know this is opium here, but don't steal it because that would be super uncool. So don't do it, okay? It blew my mind. I'm driving around here. There are all fucking fields of opium poppies growing and the only security is a sign saying, don't take it. <coughs> Don't take it. See what happens, and this is for real, and I, I know I've said it before, but so apologies if you're hearing this again, but for real, like wallabies jump the fence into the field of opium poppies and they eat them and then they're stoned off their fucking nuts. And so you get these stoned wallabies stumbling about in opium fields going, fuck man. Fuck! Fuck! Okay! Oh, I want to go home, but I don't remember where home is. Fuck, man! Oh, have you got any change, mate? Oh, come on! I've got to get home. I just need enough change to get home, man. Fucking doll hasn't come through yet. Someone give me some fucking change. And that's what Tasmania is like, basically. That's Tasmania. Just like that. That is exactly what it's like. Bunch of stoned fucking wallabies asking you for change. Okay, so if that's not a metaphor for life, I don't know what is. But, um, yeah. <laughs> no worries about that. But I, I was seriously floored when I had a holiday in Tasmania and there was no, no security at all on the opium poppies. That seemed really weird. I, I know I made it sound funny, Kelsey King, but it's a fucking real thing. Stoned wallabies is like, yeah, they eat opium and they're stoned off their fucking nuts. And I guess that's how humans learned what things are safe to eat. Well, they see animals eat things and not die and think it was there. It's like there's the old joke about, you know, the bravest man in history was the first man to eat an oyster because oysters are clearly so disgusting and vile and they look like snot. Who would eat them? So you'd have to, to be the first one to eat them, you'd have to be super brave. But of course, what, what you would have seen was birds pecking at them, seabirds breaking oyster shells off and eating the insides and you go, oh, Wait, look, the birds are eating that and they're fine. That must be edible. So you crack them off the rocks and eat them. Um, it's probably how it works. Um, good day, your arrivals. Uh, but you know, on one level, I really fucking marvel at our predecessors who've just gone, I wonder if I can eat that. Because you know, there was a certain point in history that if you were going to be the first one to try eating something, there's like a 50-50 chance you'd die. So you'd really have to consider it and go, I'm very, very hungry and I like the colour of that berry. Ooh, but I've been burnt before. You know, last winter there was this berry that I liked the look of and my whole family died when they ate it. 
So I'm not sure if I want to eat this one. Philosopher, you're asking how cold it is where I am. It's um, it's comparatively mild where I am. Uh, there were some sub-zero, like freezing temperatures last week in the surrounds. This is the coldest time of the year where I am. Like July is like the coldest time of the year. Um, will vary from, in, in Celsius, from near freezing, near zero, to like under 10 degrees and the maximums will be from 10 degrees to the mid teens mostly in the mid teens if the maximum doesn't even reach mid teens that's a cold day if the minimum is like freezing that's a cold day so a couple of weeks ago we were the maximum was all 15, 16, 17, which is, you know, cool, cold, but not freezing. And now we've got the stage where the maximum's between 10 and 14. So it's gotten colder in the last week or two. And like I said, some of the minimums in some of the suburbs have been like at freezing or below. So it's a bit cold, but it's, it's you know, it's comparatively mild. It's, it's not extreme. Oh, I'm almost finishing this ring. You know, he's got my name on it. The next one I'm going to try. Isn't that... Just, I'm not sure how well this colour comes across, but it's a really nice colour, this green. This is just vodka. This is uh, with the rock candy that was just called uh, 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 Melon Lime Fizz, I think. Do I like the cold, Kelter King? Not particularly. But I don't like extreme heat either. Like so, There is the thing, like, it's easier to put warm clothes on than it is to cool down. See, in my previous house, which I lived in for 10 years, we didn't have air conditioning. And Melbourne has these things in summer, usually in January or February, where it'll just go, oh, you know what? I'm gonna be really fucking hot for a week or two. The maximum every day for a week or two will be somewhere between 35 and 45 Celsius, but it's not going to cool down at all at night like it's not going to drop below uh 30 celsius night okay mr puggy wins can you actually explain you've been talking about the discord server anyone wondering discord channel looks done um literally what does that mean um and assume just, just okay this is nice, but pretend that i am really stupid and have fucking idea what a discord server is and what it means and what people would have to do to log into it and what it would mean and what i would have to do. just pretend pretend i were okay discord's a chat platform okay okay i'm okay with that clearly i already knew that wait a sec discord's a lobby type voice chat it comes across better than it would have had a green screen there goes the stream. I prefer humid heat, dry heat. Um, it's, like, it's like if Skype was cool. I love that. That is that is a damning indictment right there. It's like if Skype was cool. Um, but I'm I'm not completely sure what to do because I'm doing this through my YouTube channel because it's. Oh no! I'm whoa 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 whoa. whoa. Whoa, okay, that was fucking weird. Okay, I'm gonna make one more thing here. Uh, okay, I'm live. Ha! Everyone's gone. Everyone's gone, everyone's gone. Okay, I think I might have improved it. But I think it took me too long to improve it. And um, everyone left in the meantime. Okay, so maybe everyone's gonna come back now. I don't know. Let's see what's what. Like Batman always watching. I like that, Ruka-san. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, so. Look, Mike, YouTube may well have shat its DAX. Um, there's no two way to be sure. Yeah, see, the, the view account is not really real, Mr. Puggy Wins. Um, 
it fluctuates all over the place and I don't think it really reflects how many people are, are here. Um, but I think I've managed to get a better connection now. Uh, who knows? I mean, if I could do a physical connection to my router, I would. Um, but it just doesn't work there. So you're all chatting away. So, um, wait, can I chat? I'm, I'm just wondering something. If I do this, show live chat messages, none cares on, okay. No, no, no. I don't think I can do a chat thing. I don't think I can type a chat thing. You think I can? You think I can? If I really believe in myself? If I really believe in myself? I don't see. Curry Hunt, don't don't be like that. What's this do? Uh, share me microphone, cancel. Hey, wait, I'm just gonna do this. Share, um, I'm still live. I'm still laughing. Yeah, you're auto correct. Live, what the fuck? How did that happen again? Live. And drunk post. Okay. Ah, uh, might be live. All right. I'm not sure. Can anyone actually see me? I'm not sure if anyone can see me. There's a whole bunch of conversations going on there in comments, talking about going to chat and stuff. Um. And while I like the idea of Mr. Puggy Wins setting up a. Uh, 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 Discord chat. I can't do that. I, I can't be the on the YouTube and on the Discord at the same time on my phone. If I was on a PC or a laptop, I probably could. But I can't do it from my phone. Um, and fuck, YouTube made it so hard to do a live stream from a laptop or desktop. Like you have to fucking download client software that doesn't fucking work. But on a phone, you just push a button, push a button and it works. And, blah, and that's how it used to work from the desktop client. Just go, go live and it went live, but not anymore. Oh my God, it's a fucking nightmare now. Dedicated Frank Tyson called the man himself. I like that. Yeah, Tinto, it's like, I have no idea um, that's what, why YouTube made this decision to make going live via desktop or laptop so fucking hard, but they made it really fucking hard. And um, uh, it's like ridiculous. But from a mobile, it's dead easy. It's single touch from a mobile. But th that also kind of limits what you can do. Maybe what I could do, if I worked out how to do um, the chat thing that um, Mr. Puggy Wins is talking about, I could have that on a laptop and sit there going tapa 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 tapa. Um, do I still want a politics channel on Discord? Dude, at this point, um, I don't even know what that means, what that would entail. Don't think you would have distube YouTube. I don't think I would have dis YouTube so publicly. Uh, I've always been quite angry at how badly YouTube fucked up commenting, for instance. There's videos that are over 10 years old of me saying, YouTube, why the fuck can't you make commenting work? Oh, see, Mr. Pokemon's, I have to be completely honest. I don't know if I'll ever do the Discord thing. Like, I really appreciate you setting it up and stuff. I just don't know if I'm ever going to do it. Uh, I, but I'm, I'm reasonably confident I'm going to get a bit more ice and um, make another drink. So um, let's see if I can get up without falling over because that's step one. That's the first challenge. And just make it to first. Now, do I want to get an ice cube tray or just go for the office here? No, no, no. I'm going to do it easily. Get some ice cubes. Uh, okay. Okay. 
All right, got some ice cubes. That's step one. Got some lemonade. I need a wheelchair for mobility. David Hill, thank you. That's a good idea. If I had a Patreon to make a uh, rank for it. I am... Um, this is an interesting thing. Like, Aidsy with the teeth. He talks about how he's going to have to wait a couple months. Of, like, he gets put on a waiting list. And I don't think it's good. When I put up the video about him having his teeth out, someone asked about doing a Kickstarter for Aidsy's teeth. Because I'm sure if he could pay for the teeth, he could get them sooner. So... I am actually going to put that to him. I'm going to say, dude, if you could just give a dentist some cash, could you get teeth sooner? Because I think you might have to wait for a very long time on the public health system to get um, teeth again. I suspect that's been the case. I think, I think people might kick in for a Kickstarter for AIDS -y to get teeth to function as a human. Uh, what does a set of false teeth cost? I think it costs a couple thousand bucks. So I think I will get him to look into it, talk to dental people, like um, just say to them, look, how much money do I have to give you to get a set of teeth now? And then I think I might do a Kickstarter for him for teeth. Teeth starter for AZ. You're right, Biori, that's what it is. Teeth for AZ. Mixing my drink now with my fingers. Because I'm drunk enough to think that's a good idea. And AZ has some very high profile friends. People like Charlie Pickering and. Um, What? Dude, no, Mike. We, you see, we're not drinking alone. We're drinking together here. Yes, philosopher, you're right. I think AZ has a long wait time in the public system to get his teeth. So, I'm going to get him to ask the question, how much would he have to pay a dentist to get teeth, like, now? And I think we should set up a Kickstarter for him. A tooth starter. A kick in the teeth starter. David, dental is covered by Medicare in certain circumstances and, and AIDS -y is covered, you know, him being on a disability pension, he is covered for his teeth, but he has to wait a very long time. So I think if we raise some money, um, he might not have to wait as long. So you're going to find out how much it would cost for him to just get teeth now. And I think we should set up We're live. It just cut out on me completely. Okay. But it's back now. So I hope that's okay. Look, okay. Maybe that's a sign. Maybe I can't keep doing this. Mr. Puggy wins. I can't go on the Discord now while I'm on this because I have to keep the app, the YouTube app running and do that. So, um, I, I, I think, I, but going back to what I was saying before it cut out just now, I think that's a thing that should be done that a, a Kickstarter be set up for AZT, the kick in the teeth starter, uh, give AZ teeth. Um, that seems to, hey, Mike. Um, that seems reasonable to me. I think he deserves to have teeth and not to have to wait for a stupidly long time. So if we set up a fundraiser um, for AZ, AZ has a wiki, apparently. I love the idea of an AZ wiki. Man, okay, this... um. Lime Fizz Vodka is a big fucking winner. It's really tasty. All, all the drinks I mixed are nice, but the um, Lime Fizz Vodka... Oh no, stream's buffering so bad. I don't think it's going to last much longer. I think... Um, I should go to ask. I'm going to finish on that note. I think I'm going to set up a kick in the teeth starter for AIDSy. Raise money for AIDSy's teeth. I'm expecting everyone 
to kick in a dollar or two um, for that. Okay, it's going smooth for you, Mike. So yeah, I think it's, it's smoothing out now. Yes, Puggy wins. Adrian Kalia, that is his real... Well, that's not how you spell it. It's C-A-L-E-A-R. Adrian Kalia. Yes, the buffering was kind of shitty. And I think I need to um, take a piss as well. And you don't want me doing that on camera. And if you do want me doing that on camera, I don't actually want to know. So, what do you think? But yeah, AZ, we're talking AZ, I'll, I'll put an AZ video up tomorrow where he talks about how horrible it was, the whole process with his teeth, because it was pretty awful. And um, I think I think it's about time we set up a Kickstarter for his, for his teeth. And I'll talk to him tomorrow and find out um, how much his uh, teeth will cost uh, and how long it will take to get them if you can pay for them. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I feel like he deserves a, a kick in the teeth starter. And um, I think we'll pursue that. That seems fun. fair. We'll lean on some of his celebrity mates like Rose McManus and Charlie Pickering. Um, yes, the old touch the head meme. Don't need dental insurance if you've got no teeth. But you do need dental insurance if you want teeth. If you've got none and you want some false teeth, uh, you're either waiting a very long time for them or you're paying to get them. Um, so I think it's reasonable if we um, uh, s set up a, a Kickstarter for AIDSy to get uh, teeth. So I am, I am going to ask him how much that will cost and... Uh, might set up a fundraiser for oh I'll, I'll work out what the be best platform is um whether it's gofundme or kickstarter or something like that metal teeth like jaws from the james bond movie is a pretty good idea biori look i was gonna go because the bloody stream was cutting out but now it's staying up really solidly. Um, maybe I should stay for a while. It's um, gangster golden teeth. That's also a nice idea, Curie. See, these are these these would be the stretch goals. It's like you know, if we get donations to this point, he gets normal human-looking teeth. Uh, if we if we get to this point, he gets metal teeth like Jaws from James Bond. If he gets this much. They're gold teeth. Uh, if it's this much, they're flashing LED lights. And if this much, it's 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 like uh, shark teeth. I have actually seen pictures of a guy um, who he had like a, a dolphin washed up on the beach where he lived and he uh, took its teeth out and got a dentist to make a set of dentures with sharp dolphin teeth, which look like sharp teeth, because dolphins are carnivores. And so he had these pointy teeth in his thing. So, you know, can be done. Have I ever considered going to Newcastle? I, I've i been to Newcastle in the past. I have not been there for a very long time. Um, not traveling much at the moment. Um, I, I used to go, um, when I was a kid, every year on my holidays, school holidays, we would go to Newcastle. And way back in the 90s, that was probably the last time I was in Newcastle, in the 90s, I was on...